So this is a circle and that's a string. Yay. Okay, but what about if you wrap something around it and you pull and the more you wrap around it, the more friction you get in between the string and the cylinder. So this is called the, it's called the capstan equation. And I, I was uh, introduced, actually, I remember writing about this some time ago, but uh, recently on Twitter, let's see, who was it? It was Dr. Lex Meep on Twitter uh, shared a link to this. And, you know, sometimes it's like a trap, right? Can you, can you talk about this? And I do want to talk about, because I want to derive the, this equation that relates the tension, the change in tension from one side to the other to the angle that it's wrapped around. Right, so if you wrap around a whole bunch of times, then the tension on this side can be way greater than the tension on that side. So you can hold just a little bit here and, and it would be really, really difficult to pull right there. And that's the whole beauty of this thing. Uh, and it's, it's an exponential amount of uh, force multiplier, sort of like. Uh, and that has to do with the frictional coefficient between the string and the material too. So let's get to it. I'm gonna turn off my little camera here. I'm still learning how to do all this stuff. No, that, okay. Let me move my microphone. Okay, so how do I find, let's say I want to pull on this side with the force T1 and on that side with the force T2 and I want a relationship between those two based on this angle. And I'm using a standard, the same standard stuff that everyone else uses. So this is the angle beta. And then, that's a B. And this has a, some coefficient of friction, static friction mu. I'll just leave it as mu. So let's look at a small piece of this string. So I'm just going to draw just a piece of the string. And this is blown up. It's right there. So this is some angle delta theta. So this piece is in the equilibrium and it's a massless string for now. And I think maybe this would be a great homework problem to see what happens if the string has mass. But it's a massless string with the coefficient of friction uh, of mu. So there's really um, four forces acting on this string that's in equilibrium. So these four forces have to add up to zero. So I know that F net equals zero because it's in equilibrium. So the first force I have is T1. So I'll call that T1 over here. I'll just call, actually I'm gonna call it T. It's a vector. And then I'm gonna have over here a bigger force. I'm gonna call this T plus DT, right? So this is the added tension. There's going to be some set tension in the whole string, but this is the added tension that's different on this side versus that side. And so this means that I'm, I'm pulling it this way, right? I'm pulling it this way. So there must be some frictional force pushing back the other way. Now, at this point, I'm at the top of my circle. So the frictional force is tangent to that, yeah, tangent to the circle. Yeah. So it'd be this way. And I'll call that F friction. Now there's one other force acting on the string because of course if these are your only three forces the string would accelerate down. Why doesn't it accelerate down? Well because there's a normal force. And I'm going to call this dn. Where did I put my notes? I like to, I worked out the problem beforehand so I want to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Okay. Let's call this d theta. So I have, so there's the normal force dn, the frictional force f, there's the tension on the right t, and then it's a greater tension on the left t plus dt, and those are all vectors. Now, they have to add up to the zero vector, which means that I can write f net x equals zero. The net force is in the x direction is equal to zero. Where's my pen? I want a different color. So let's say I have, here is my x. Ooh, that's a bad one. Look at that. I just grabbed it. It was bad. Throw that one away. Here's my good one. Here's the x direction. And look right here. Both t and t plus delta t 
are, have a component in the x-direction and there is a component from the friction force in the x-direction. So let's write all these out. So what's the component of this in the x-direction? Well look right here I have a right triangle right there where this is the angle d theta over 2. If that's the case then this angle is also d theta over 2. And you can imagine, just to help yourself see that, what if this angle d theta over 2 went to 0, so this is all the way up here, then this angle would also go to 0. So, and they move the same way. Okay. So there's some geometry tricks you could do right there, but I don't want to get into the geometry. So that's that. And this angle is also d theta over 2. So this one's going to have, if I draw just that force right there, I have t, I have d theta over 2, this is my x component, that's my y component, this is t magnitude, so this would be the adjacent side, so that'd be the cosine. So this is going to be equal to t cosine d theta over 2. That's the x component of this. Now what about this one? This is going to be minus t plus dt cosine theta over 2. Right? It's the same component because it's the same angle, uh, but it has a greater tension. Oh, that's d theta over 2. And then finally I have the frictional force, so I'll say plus FF. And those are my forces in the x direction. So let's just multiply this out. So here I have 0 equals T cosine d theta over 2. Now I'll get minus T d, so minus T cosine d theta over 2 and then I have minus dt cosine d theta over 2 plus the frictional force. And right here, oh those cancel, boom. And also I can put in, I can use my normal model for friction. My normal model for the max, this is I guess the maximum friction force. Yeah, we're, we're calculating the maximum change in tension. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. So the normal model for the friction force is mu is less than or equal to f is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we're at the maximum part, so this is going to be f f equals mu n. But the normal force here I'm calling dn. So right here I get zero equals negative dt cosine d theta over two plus mu dn. See, isn't that nice? We, we didn't do anything crazy. All I did was use uh, f net equals zero. That's all. Okay, but now let's do it again in the y direction. Uh, in the y direction, I'm going to switch to another page because I know I'm going to run out of room, and it's better to run out of room. Uh, actually, so let's just think right here. I'm going to get this y component of the tension, uh, this y component of the tension, and then the normal force. So I'm going to say f net. y is going to be dn minus t sine of d theta over 2 minus t plus dt sine d theta over 2 equals 0. Is this pen going bad? No, it's okay. Just I think the color is bad. So let's write this. I have negative t sine theta d over 2 minus t sine theta so those two add together so I get two of them. So I get dn minus 2t sine d theta over 2 and then I have a minus dt sine d theta over 2 equals 0. So that's the other equation. Okay, let's go ahead and um, solve this for dn. So dn equals, I uh, add these two things to the side, I get 2t sine d theta over 2 plus dt sine d theta over 2. Now I can substitute that into my x equation. So here's my x equation. I'm going to write this down again. 0 negative dt cosine d theta over 2 plus mu dn. So I'm going to put this in right there. 
So I get zero equals negative dt cosine d theta over two plus mu times all of this. So two t sine d theta over two plus mu dt sine d theta over two. Okay, we're moving right along here. Now let's make some approximations. Uh, so I want to go back over here. I'm going to take the, the, this is a super, super, super tiny piece, right? Because I can't deal with a really large thing because here the normal force is, changes in direction and in magnitude. So it's really difficult to do. But if I have a tiny piece, I can do that. And this is super, super, super tiny. So it's super, super, super tiny. Then this sine is a super tiny angle. And if you remember what sine looks like, sine looks like this. So if you're in this region, then sine of theta versus theta, it's a straight line. So sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So this, I can say sine of d theta over two is approximately equal to d theta over two. And if you remember what cosine looks like, cosine looks like this. I didn't draw that right. But up here, at when uh, cosine, when theta is really small for cosine theta, it's very close to one. So this value, I'm gonna say cosine d theta over two is approximately equal to one. So let's put those in. I get zero equals negative dt. And then I get d, I, this is just gonna be one. Then I have plus two mu t d theta over two. And over here, I get d theta times dt. Now, both dt and d theta are super small. And the general rule is when you have two super small things multiplied by each other, then that's approximately 0 because it's two differentials multiplied by each other. So I get this. These cancel. So now I get, I can add that to the other side. Actually, I can divide. Let's do that. So now I get dt equals mu t d theta. Now I can divide both sides by t and I get dt over t equals mu d theta. Now you know what we do. We can integrate both sides. So I get dt over t equals mu d theta. Integrate from t1 to t2 from theta from equals zero to theta equals beta. So this side, if I integrate dt over t, that is gonna be the natural log. So I get the natural log of t from t1 to t2. And on this side, I just have mu as a constant. So if I integrate d theta, I just get mu theta from zero to beta. So over here, that means I get the natural log of t2 divided by t1, which is good, right? Because we never like to write this in physics because you can't take the natural log of something with units. And this is going to be equal to mu times beta minus zero or just beta. Now, uh, I want to find the, the tension, right? So I'm going to take the uh, exponential of both sides and I get t2 over t1 equals e to the mu beta and multiply both sides by t1, I get t2 equals t1 e mu beta. And that's the capstan, is that capstan equation? That's weird, okay, it must be a person. Uh, that's the equation right there. So this says that the greater the wrap angle, the more, oh, I can get my little thing. So if I have a, a small angle like this that I'm wrapping around and I wanna find the force, the different, the, the the force on one side versus the other, uh, and this is a massless string, okay, then I can multiply like, the coefficient of static friction times this angle that it subtends. If I go all the way around, then beta is 2 pi. And this is, you can tell, I can pull really hard on this side, and, and I hardly have to hold on this at all. Actually, if I let go and I hold this stationary, 
Uh, you can't feel it much, but if I just hold this with my pinky, yeah, I, I, I barely have to hold it, and it's easy. It, I, can, I can't pull. It won't slip. Okay, so that's the Capstan equation. There's a whole bunch of really cool applications for this. Um, and of course, you know, I'll probably do a follow-up problem. I, w I wanted to do, and I, I don't think I'm going to do it right now, I wanted to go back over to here and break this into pieces, finite piece sizes, and calculate the, uh, the frictional force on each of these pieces numerically and then add them up and see if it works the same way. Uh, I might come back and do that later, but if you want a little project, that'd be a good thing for you to do. And, and there you go. I'll stop right there.